I pat love with Pat's two cents. Now that I have calmed down. Ooh. Okay, that's better. Now, I want to share something with you. Uh, I was talking about how a lot of times we don't like to mix our denominational beliefs. We feel like we're going to walk away with some type of contaminant on us and it will infiltrate, in infiltrate our body of believers. Ergo, many will be... Uh, uh, many will go astray as a result. Well, let me share this with you. Um, I used to, when I first got saved, I belonged to the Church of God. Now, they are supposedly non-denominational, which they try to practice. And we had a joint service with a Catholic church in Pasadena. Now, this something that happened there stuck with me for the rest of my life. And I'm going to share something with you that happened to me while I was on a handball court. Now, they had their choir sing with our choir or vice versa because we were having the service at their sanctuary. And when we had our service there, after all the rehearsals and the sheet music and all of that, one of the songs we learned, some of you may know it, some of you may have heard of it, it may be totally uh, unknown to most people unless you're from a Catholic persuasion. But this is the song. I'm going to sing it real quick, but I'm not trying to sing. So don't listen to a solo. Listen to these words. Glorious is the name of Jesus Praise his holy name, O oh, glorious and righteous and holy is his name, O oh, glorious is his name. Now here's the other part. I feel his presence in this place. His spirit has control. Can't you feel his warm embrace and all oh, the joy within your soul? Oh, glorious is his name. Now, doesn't sound good because I only sang one part. When you put all three parts, soprano, tenor, I mean soprano, alto, tenor, you sing that song with harmony. It sounds like something that came straight from heaven. Now, as I'm talking about it, I'm tearing up because there is an anointing on that song and it has nothing to do with Catholic. It has nothing to do with denominationalism. Whoever wrote that song in the Catholic movement was in God's presence. And they got that song straight from heaven. Now the reason I tell you this, the reason I'm so moved, the song is so anointed. One day I was in a handball court. This is why we cannot stay separate from each other. I don't care where we fall in error. As long as we are Get united in our faith in Christ and united in love. Listen, I was at a handball court. Basically, it was the uh, inside, four walls. And I had my little racket and I went inside and I closed my door and I had the whole room to myself. And I'm just banging the ball up against the wall and practicing my backhand and doing all that. Racquetball. I always say handball because that's how I started. Now, here I am in the handball court by myself. I started singing that song. I felt the presence of God come on me so strong and fill that room that I dropped my racket, I dropped the ball, I slid down the wall onto the floor and worshiped God. Now the reason I'm so passionate about this is because my point is, we were Church of God. That song came out of a Catholic movement, but it was
was anointed, and God does not anoint a falsehood. Whether the Catholics have it all right or have a lot wrong, there are some people in the Catholic movement that are true blue. They really have a connection to God. And it takes them beyond the error. Just like some of you, Seventh-day Adventists, have it right. You have a connection with God. Some of you don't. And some of you have it all wrong. But the day. Some of you Church of God people have this right and have that wrong. Some of you aren't even living a righteous life. And you have it all wrong. So my point is, when God brings an anointing, we miss out when we refuse to commune together. I would never have known that song. And every time I sing it, it blesses my soul because of the anointing that's on it. I could sing, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. And him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, I, I feel good singing it. But glorious is the name of Jesus. Has an anointing on it. And there, that is a song that ushers me into the presence of God easily. Now, had I never known that song, because we refuse to sing with a Catholic church, because we refuse to tolerate their level of error, look at all the connections with God I could have missed out on. I went to a church in Pasadena, a Harvest Rock Church. Now, I wasn't a member there. I was a member of Living Waters. Now, the church I was at, at the time, the pastor was so scrutinous. And so, uh, how can I say, so suspicious of other persuasions that it took him forever to finally announce to our church that this ministry was going on. Now, I had left that church temporarily. I came back when I married my husband. But I left it temporarily because at Living Waters, I needed, they had what I needed, which was inner healing. They were not Church of God. They were charismatic. And the men would dance and praise God together, and the women would do their little dance, and we would all dance in the aisles together. And the blacks there were a minority. The Mexicans there were a minority. It was predominantly a white church. And when that pastor who played, uh, I think it's called the brass or the trumpet, when he played that bad boy, you could feel the presence of God. It was such an anointing. They knew how to bring, usher in the presence of God through their instruments. It was the most amazing thing. And let me tell you, I was getting a, uh, uh, my husband would call it a gully washing. I would go in there and I would just start boohooing. And all the hurts and all the frustrations that I had dealt with and accumulated from the body of Christ just started washing off of me over time. And I ended up entering in to a season of inner healing. I wouldn't have gotten it from the church I was attending. I had to go to another movement to get that. That doesn't say that something was wrong with the church that I had to leave to get to this. No, the emphasis is different. Different operations, same spirit. Different operations, one body. Different administrations, one body, same spirit. In Christ. End of, uh, end of that story. Now, what happened was during my visits to this church, they found out that Harvest Rock was having renewal services in Pasadena on a particular street. The pastor and the elders prayed over this. 
they went and, and watched and scrutinized for themselves and acknowledged God, open-minded, but they checked it out before they told us. When they came back with their report, they said, we recommend everybody go to this thing because this is of God. Now, we started going to that in the evenings because the pastor was secure enough to allow his members, encourage his members to go to another persuasion, or shall I say yet another persuasion of faith to receive from the Lord firsthand. When I went, there were men laying down and, and I mean, some prostrate, some on their sides, some curled up in fetal positions, bawling their eyes out. God was doing a deep-rooted healing for many. And I mean, every race under the sun was, a, was in that auditorium. It held about six to 8,000 people. I got so much healing through that. So much healing. I even started because it was so open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing without fear that I started operating in gifts I had never operated in before. I got a taste of prophecy. I got a taste of knowledge. I started even discernment. I mean, I was just starting to really, to really flow in areas I had never even touched before. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You're not only free to flow, you're free to receive. You're free to heal. In whatever mode, some laughed in their healing, some cried in their healing, some shook like they were having seizures. But the healing was taking place nonetheless. And nobody was told how to or how not to behave to get their healing. Everyone was free. I got more healing in that one three-year period, going five, six nights a week, tired from work, but had to get there because God was there, and I knew he'd show up, and I needed what he had to give me. My point in saying all that it's when the body is willing to knock down their walls, their barriers, and their suspicions. And their holier-than-thou attitudes. We begin to benefit from one another. What one church had, what one church had, they rich in the word. But what I needed, they didn't have by that point in my life. They had what I needed for the first 13 years of my walk with Jesus. But there came a point where I needed a deep work. I couldn't get it there. So I got it there. And then they rerouted me. And I got an even deeper work. And I'm telling you, refreshing turned out to be deep inner healing and deliverance. Which went right back around to refreshing. And it just, the cycle just got better and better and better and higher and more glorious. And I became a whole different person. My point in that is we can benefit from one another in the body of Christ. If we keep in mind we are one body. Not separate, not Democrats versus Republicans. We are one body. There's only one Christ. But if you leave it up to us, we cut his arms off and his fingers and toes and his head and everything else and get our little piece and that's mine. You can't play with mine. No, that's mine. You better stay away. I'll beat you up. This is, this is mine. This is my piece of Jesus. I like this part. This is, let me see, what part is this? Oh, that's the foot. Yeah, I'm keeping this. I don't want to play with your hand. I want to play with my foot. I mean, we don't realize how ridiculous it is. We all fall short of the glory of God. So imagine when we come together. If this church is, 
is rich in gifts and that church is rich in word and the other church is rich in miracles and another church is rich in healing. I mean, can you imagine how we could benefit from one another? Now, by the time the suspicious pastor finally decided to tell the church about the renewal services, the anointing was only in crumbs and pieces one night a week. That's how long he waited. And everybody I know at that church missed out on what I got to get. Because I got it through another. You cannot be closed-minded about where your beginnings are. Because God's not looking at a splintered body. He's looking at the whole. And if he tells you to get in the front seat, the back seat, stand around the car, sit on the hood, whatever, you're still connected to that car. Same way we're still connected to Christ. You may have to go in different avenues and different venues to get what you need. Because every church does not supply all. They all have a different emphasis. And when you become aware of that, you lose your fear of differences. You lose your fear of the variety, the many expressions. Okay, I'm going to stop because I, I'm so serious about this. We are cheating ourselves. We are ripping ourselves off and allowing the devil to steal, kill, and destroy right there within our body that we refuse to really, truthfully, totally, be connected with. Pray on it, you guys. God bless you.